Sick, all right. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I, this is what I mean. This is perfect. All right, so basically, um, here we are. It's a sunny day. People of the internet, it is Ed the Dread of the Tribe of Good Vibes. I'm here with two homies, very interesting individuals. We have Julian and Scott. And uh, we're going to talk about life, liberty, and the pursuit of whatever we want. All right? Thank you. Anyone that doesn't like music, I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like, even the genre you like could be the most far out thing, but you still like it. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, what types of music do you guys like? What are you into? Uh, a little bit of everything. I, I listen to a lot of, uh, like, indie rock, experimental music, uh, hip-hop, some R&B, even some country. Yeah, but you were like rap guy back in the day. Though, yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. Everybody, I feel like everybody had a rap phase. Yeah, it's, it's like, like almost like, head, like yeah. a yeah, for sure. It's, it's, it's a rite of passage. Yeah, in America at least. What about yourself? Oh, especially in America. I think rap is 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 a. It's like a. It's one of those things where it's 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 you know, within music, it's a it's a whole entire culture of its own. You know, I feel like it's a little bit more than just a genre, almost like a uh, a movement. I mean, because it's it's one of the youngest genres of music, you yeah. know, and definitely the, I mean, through, and I think it's definitely carries with it the most controversy. Sure. Uh, yeah. Through time. Uh, yeah. Have you ever seen Rhyme and Reason? No. It's uh, like yeah. a rap documentary. No. It's made in like maybe the mid. You know. I'm just gonna chill for a minute. All right, but yeah, Rhyme and Reason, dude. You've never seen that one? No, what is that? Um, It's like, they interview like mad dudes, like Red Man, Method Man, okay. like mm -hmm. uh, De La Soul, The mm -hmm. Far Side, like not like literally like 90s, 90s rap groups. And I just remember like at one point somebody says that like, that, like you're saying like hip hop's not just like a music, it's like, it's, it's like a lifestyle mm -hmm. almost where like, you know, a like a dude's pants might be sagging, but like that's hip hop, you know, or like... One dude will shake your hand, like another dude will like pound you, hit you, you like up. that's hip hop, yeah. you know, like it's kind of like it's cultural. Yeah, yeah, it's like a maybe ur more, way more urban than yeah most, but it's definitely infiltrated almost every demographic at this point. Oh, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, aside from say hip hop, you guys play instruments. Yeah, actually, <clears throat> I played a lot of instruments when I was younger, like coming up through school. Like, you know, you have your like your electives, you play like. Trumpet, violin, but uh, trumpet player. Trumpet player. <laughs> he yeah, was at home man. cleaning that Miles, spit valve out. Davis. Um, but I, the the two that kind of stuck with me the most were um, I never got too good at like piano, but like I always liked keyboard, but more so like keyboard, like synthy kind of keyboard, and mm -hmm. then you know guitar. I've had an electric and acoustic, and those are the two that have kind of stuck with me. Yeah, guitar's a good one. Right. You play guitar, right? I uh, yeah, big time guitar player. A little wiggly wiggly noodling on the solo. A little shredding, a little. I don't know you play guitar, Scott. Oh, yeah. Really? A huge guitar player. Really? Yeah. Oh. It's like, like the first thing he said. I was like, hey, man, I play guitar. He's like, I played guitar, man. Practicing scales. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. yeah. I used to practice and practice and practice. Well, what happened, man? You don't play anymore? Uh, I do occasionally. Not as much. Like, I don't know. If you're into, like, if you're like, you know, I was like, 13 when I got a guitar I had a lot of time on my hands yeah, yeah, yeah. I had hours a day to practice you know download uh, tabs off the yeah. internet learn songs and your friends are you yeah. got like ultimate a guitar yeah. too. ultimate uh, yeah. guitar tabs <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean that's yeah well who hasn't been to yeah, that yeah, one everybody's been to that one yeah. I probably yeah, got the binders not, of that stuff yeah dude that's it's like it's messed up though. If you try to look at it on mobile, they tell you uh -huh. to download the app and oh, you gotta, yeah. like, pay for it. They're like, "Nah, we're not like you're not even allowed to yeah. look at the site like from your right. mobile." It's messed yeah. up, man. So I wanted to get some tabs off of there, but they yeah, get it all blocked up. 
all blocked up. When was the last time you played, man? Uh, so I guess last week. Oh. I'll, I'll pick it up. And... Well, yeah, that's not too long ago. Yeah. yeah. You got instruments at your apartment? Yeah, dude. I actually, well, I, I own two guitars. One I don't have at my place, but I've got a, um, <clears throat> it's just like an old nylon. Uh, oh, classical. I, I, yeah, classical. Classical <laughs> nylon. I, you know what it is? I, I just kind of like the sound of nylon over steel strings. Uh-huh. You don't really get that that ring you know yeah. like when you're plucking you don't yeah. get that like bow, bow, yeah. so much and you get like a much cleaner sound and i like how the frets are much more open you uh-huh. got a lot more space in between yeah. them but actually i am um that little blurb i let you hear yeah. a couple yeah. weeks ago i'm kind of like working yeah. on a little he something. won't say it but he's a very good singer i'm kind of i'm kind of oh, working on it right he's now he's a very good singer oh. so you know i got a little got a little something i'm trying to all right. Put together, working with. Well, uh, dude, you don't have to be the best singer ever to be a singer. I mean, half these fools aren't even that great. You just gotta have a sing, sound, man. You just, just gotta, got, yeah. You just gotta be stoked that you do it, and yeah. then other people will be stoked, and it could sound like crap, but they'll love it, man. Yeah. So sing your heart out. I definitely will. <laughs> so. I'm gonna start singing. <laughs> La da 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 da. da. <laughs> uh, just play. I don't know about singing, but I might. I might. So you have been recording stuff though. Uh, I mean, like, on my phone, just trying to. Well, what I'm trying to do is, I would like to put together. Well, I'm trying to put together at least like maybe like four or five, like solid songs, and then try to get them like recorded, yeah. uh, semi-professionally. Yeah. Uh, and just kind of like, you know, more so than not even trying to take it anywhere, but just mainly for like my own satisfaction of knowing that I like birthed something yeah. that's my own you know yeah, absolutely and, uh, you know like even if I were to like take it somewhere and get like a bunch of CDs made just give it out to people yeah. you know and just kind of do it like that but in no way for any sort of like CDs well, man. Profit <laughs> that, yeah. or anything like that whoa yeah, this guy's talking CDs iTunes SoundCloud <laughs> uh, but yeah that's currently what I do I mean it's I mean, you know I'm just well, trying the, thing, to, the thing is, if you do it just because you like to do it to express yourself, that's yeah. like the point. You yeah. Know? Like then you'll keep doing it, and then you probably will become famous because yeah. like you just do it because you like it, not because you're trying yeah. to reach this stupid goal of sign your soul away for stardom business. Oh yeah, what do you think about all that? Oof. I don't know. Selling it's tough. Out. I don't know. What do you think, man? Real big fish like ska back in the day. Oh yeah, yeah. Sell out. <laughs> With me. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I don't have any, like, you know, I, it's hard for me to say. I haven't been Have in any of situation. your favorite artists sold out? Did you, like, out? like them in the um, beginning, and then they became, like, too I don't know. I mean, down. like, they're, it's always kind of a question, and, you know, it's like a cultural thing. Like, you know, in some musical communities, it's like, selling out is not a problem at all. In some other communities, it's, like, terrible. <laughs> so, I mean, I, it's kind of hard to say. I mean, like, there's a band I really like called Of Montreal, and they, I think, made some, like, commercials, or they, like, licensed their music for commercials. And it was either of Montreal or Apples and Stereo, and they were like, you know, the reason we're doing this is we want to keep making music. Like, this is what we want to do for a living. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, we got to make some money doing yeah. it. Um, Y'all and, aren't buying enough of CDs. <laughs> yeah, and, and we're not, like, selling it to Halliburton. Yeah, you know, yeah. So, you know, like, we're okay with them maybe selling a car with our... Yeah music <laughs> well it's also it's, like it's tough yeah and it, it also like you have a lot of those like musicians that maybe kind of like fall off a little bit or maybe even not even so much but then they like they like go into acting or like start doing commercials yeah and, like they're like terrible actors and it's like it always seems like people it's like people go from like music to acting and maybe like that's what they do but it almost seems like that's part of the mold it's like oh like that's the next step like oh is that what you're agent wants you to do yeah. or something like that and in terms yeah. of like selling out i think anytime you you know you you sign yourself to like a record company or something like that and then at that point you have somebody telling you like well you could only have this amount of tracks and no cut out that verse and put this one in or yeah. we're gonna hire you know someone to co-write this i think in in the sense of like not selling so much your soul but it's like selling out your your you know your, your artistic your yeah your creativeness you know because at that point it's not about it's not all coming from you yeah there's yeah. other people involved yeah i mean i think it's hard to say because you know like i think there's also like merits to just being like a really good entertainer i look at like somebody like bruno mars and yeah. it's like like you know I, he writes a lot of his own music he's like a super entertainer he's like when i see him at the super bowl halftime show it's like great to watch yeah you know like 
hey, you know, like, people, <laughs> you know, it's like. He found his niche. Well, I mean, it's like, you don't see that much uh, attention to showmanship these days. And, like, can that be an art form in and of itself? Just like entertainment? Yeah, being like, like a, that's all you know, TV a singer, is. a dancer, a bulletproof brother. Well, I mean, you think about, like. answers. What do you think about like Michael Jackson? It's just like, exactly. I mean, he was like, an entertainer. Yeah, you know what I mean? that's what I mean. Like, yeah, but he choreographed all his music. own stuff. Like he, it wasn't yeah. like he just showed up and somebody was like, "Hey, Mike, this is how you're gonna do this dance, and you're gonna make it look good, right?" And he was like, "Yeah." Like that dude was like making yeah. it all happen, yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, and I think Bruno Mars is kind of similar to that. I mean, he came up as like a songwriter before he was like an independent artist. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you're writing like a song for McDonald's, like maybe that's selling out. But you know. It's kind of tough to say. Celebrity so, endorsement, yeah. man. It's crazy. But I I don't know. I can feel when people are over one thing and just move on to something else. Because, mm-hmm. and I guess if you're already famous, like, just the next famous thing to do is, like, be on the TV screen. Or, you know, or, or like, you know what a perfect example of this is? Like, people, like, you have, like, all of these, like, like famous people that are maybe, like, way past their time, and then they start doing, like, reality TV, yeah. you know? Oh, uh, that's, like, I feel like that's, like, the epitome. I don't like, know if that's epitome. selling that's out anymore. No, no, but not even, like, selling out, but it's just, <laughs> like... It's, like, trying to buy back in. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's make a, let's make a love show yeah. where 15 people are trying to yeah. win your heart. Go for Flavor Flav. That Flavor was Flav. the one, Flavor baby. of Love. Oh, that was the one, man. Flavor oh, of man. Love, man. Q clip of Flavor of Love. Like, that's, <laughs> like, that's bad. Uh, oh, my gosh. Well, yeah, man, I mean, music, It, it's a thing that's changed so much due to the internet. Oh, I mean, yeah, back, for sure. you know, previously, it's like you had to go. I remember going to the record store on Monday night at midnight. Because, like, albums dropped Tuesday. It was, like, Monday midnight. They'd be open for, like, 45 minutes. Dude, Tower Records right here in Rockville. You could show up and buy albums for 45 minutes, like, before, you know, the Tuesday Uh opening date. And now, just go, like, YouTube to mp3.com. And you just, Mm -hmm. I mean, the quality of sound is nowhere near as good as it was when it's, like, pressed, Mm -hmm. you know. But, or even, I guess, cassette is, like, still pretty good compared to mp3, but... Wow. Uh, well, I think like I don't know if we want to get into the technical. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, fidelity. Anyway, all right, okay. We'll high leave, fidelity. Uh, we'll leave high fidelity. Low five. Yeah. <laughs> well, the point being that the internet is a vast place where you can find. Yeah, many how a almost thing. everything is distributed now. Mm-hmm. Any, uh, you know, any product that can be made digital, even physical products, you know, buy a yeah. lot of those through the internet now. Yeah, no, you love the internet, right? You're course, on that. Man. You're on it, baby. Connecting. So what's like your favorite thing to do on the internet? Connect with other people. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So you're like social media dude or um, blog or like I used to do a lot more social media, room, but no, just like reading forum. reading blogs, kind of seeing, you know, getting a lot of perspectives, you know. It's I think the most beautiful thing about the internet is that, you know, even like 20 years ago, if you wanted the news, you go to the New York Times, you go to, you know, like the Washington Post, LA Times, and you get their perspective. Uh, now, you know, you have lots of people giving different perspectives, you know. Not everybody sees things in the same way, you know. Uh, you know, we have all these issues going on right now with, like, pre- police brutality. If we just have the LA Times telling us exactly what is going on I mean we're not gonna get the full story and it's funny that's funny I'm sorry to like cut you yeah. off but a lot of times I feel like it comes down to like oh well who's telling the truth yeah you know like everybody's like well like Fox isn't gonna tell the truth or like yeah. CNN's not gonna tell you the truth but it's just a different perspective right. so yeah like yeah. if you just see every if, if everyone had the chance to say their perspective on the issue you'd get like a billion yeah. different instead of just the one outlet that's been shoved down yeah. the road yeah I think that's why like independent news like yeah, you know, like what is it like the Young Turks or something like that? Like oh yeah, Young yeah, Turks. Are lots like, of different yeah. things. Young Turks, <laughs> big up, big up, Young Turks. Y'all YouTubed up, yeah. Young <laughs> Turks. <laughs> 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 but yeah, the barrier to entry to like publishing or like creating art and distributing it to lots of people is so low now. It's lower than it's ever been, and you, you know, I mean, you used to have to have a printing press to like let people know. Uh, what's going on it's like Andre 2000 said you know the only people who hear the speech are the ones who know about it yeah. mm-hmm. you know you can put anything out now and potentially it can get picked up by a major news organization or by a, a large scale blogger or like somebody 
He's got a big Twitter account. You know, you can get the word out there. You know, there's definitely some bad things to the internet, and uh, but uh, you know, it's kind of like you can't have the good without the bad. Yeah. You know. So, what do you think is like the most one of the most helpful things that the internet has done? So I know there's like so much like a, like just open source like you can you can do it. I mean, I was shooting a video to make kombucha. You know, yeah. So like you can get how to do anything mm. that you want to do. Like, oh, my car's broken. Well, yeah. Yeah, I think that's. I think one of the biggest things is like just kind of like the being able to, you know, like mass mass produce like information. You know, like there's so many things. I mean, even with just like you know like basic like other things like you could you can read text you know like there are literally like you know textbooks available online that yeah. you can read to help you with yeah. like certain topics and things like that modules you know and things of, of that nature just you know information or if someone like myself you know in asking what you use the internet for you know someone who's always looking up recipes you yeah. know and things like that uh, it's 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 great I think <clears throat> It's 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 allowed people to be able to you know just like share ideas yeah. you know and information. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is the internet is totally democratizing. You know, everybody has a say, and that's kind of like how you can have like you know the good and the bad. It's like the thing where people are like, oh, Wikipedia can be edited by anybody. So like you can have very authoritative people who know way more than some guy who's writing you know the copy for Webster's. You know. You know, somebody who's, like, devoted their whole life to, like, yeah. knowing, you know, like, the evolution of the moonwalk or something like that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, and but then you can also have some guy come in and just say, like, you know, like, poop, you know. <laughs> yeah. But poop is a popular phrase yeah, nowadays. Yeah, everybody has a say, and that's the thing. It's like, you know, Julian's getting recipes from other people who love to cook, you know. And generally, I mean, the way... The way the internet works and like search algorithms for like Google is like they try to filter the better stuff up to the top, but there's definitely like crap out there. Oh yeah. But that's you know that's the whole thing. It's that's the best part about the internet is that it's democratizing. Every you know like Julian can go out there and say like, hey, I made this new uh, salami sandwich. Check this out. You know. Yeah. Here's my new song. You know, mm -hmm. you, you can put a lot of stuff out there. And uh, everybody has a say in it. Yeah. Yeah, but you still have the minority that owns like all the the cables that yeah. run around the world. And well, that's why <laughs> net neutrality is so important. Expand net, on that. Uh, net neutrality is uh, sort of a political term. Uh, sort of, it's like a, right now we kind of have net neutrality, which means that like uh, internet service provider like Verizon provides a dumb pipe they don't do anything with it it's just you can connect to the internet and then you can do whatever you want to do uh, if you don't have net neutrality uh, a company like Verizon could say like hey um, you know like uh, I don't know HBO has given us more money we're gonna give them more bandwidth and we're gonna throttle the the bandwidth to tribegoodvibes.com and so they try to go to Tribe Good Vibes. It's like slower. People go to a different website because it's taking too long. They're sitting there 10 minutes trying to get the skim board results up. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's why it's an important thing. Is this thing. 3G? <laughs> yeah, and there are, you know, like, obviously companies like uh, Comcast, Verizon are all, you know, against net neutrality because they can make more money selling bandwidth. They, you know, mm. they can sell a high-speed internet to certain companies who can afford to pay for it. And, you know, it's, you know, that's why right now it's, you know, super important for people to be aware of net neutrality and fighting for it, in my opinion. Fighting the good fight, man. Well, another thing that the internet has changed vastly mm -hmm. is cinema. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, movies, you get to go, you can go to a website streaming from China and watch, like, any yeah. live game, any movie, anything ever. Um, but... I mean, aside from the internet's impact on cinema, I was kind of mm -hmm. more wanted to touch on just like how you are into cinema. That's mm -hmm. like one of one of your things that you do. Yeah. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, when did that kick off for you? Um, I guess ever since I was younger, I've always just had a just a fascination for just kind of film in itself in terms of like, you know, like when DVDs were like super popular, 
uh, I, I remembered, like, from the home screen, if you went to, like, extras, you could always watch or listen to, like, the director's commentary, or, like, the actor's commentary, yeah. like, during the movie. And I just always, like, be like, oh, like, how did they do that? Like, oh, that, like, that shot's really cool. And more so, like, my, you know, as someone who's just appreciates art, like, one of the biggest things that I think is so just, like, wonderful about, you know, a film and one of the reasons that I try to support independent uh, is just because uh, the amount of creativity that actually goes into it um, in terms of, you know, like cinematography and the writing and the acting and, you know, set design uh, and all that stuff. And I think one of the cool things about, uh, one of the things I like about film the most is that I think it is a, it's a, it's kind of like a mash um, of so many different types of art coming together. Like you've got somebody that studied cinematography. You've got somebody who is a, is, a, is a writer. You have someone who has studied acting. You have someone who has, that knows set design and then all of that coming together. And not at all to discredit other forms of art because I love it, you know. Someone that, someone that draws or does sculpture, you know, it's very linear. Yeah. But I think like film, it, 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 it brings everything together. Which is which is which is really really cool, and I think that kind of tying it into uh, you know cinema and and like the internet, I think uh, it's you know you, the anti anti piracy and all of that stuff. I think that you know you have these huge you know I'm not like trying to you know I'm not a diehard advocate but it's just like I think I think that in major like major film companies there's just way too much money being thrown around yeah. with these like large production companies and it's just like you mean to tell me like I can't get on the internet and you know watch a movie that I really want and you know not have to pay $16 for a movie ticket you know what I mean yeah. and I understand like there's people that you know there's people that this is what they do as a profession but you know also at the same time it's just like you know do a-list actors really need to be getting paid thirty million dollars for a film, you know what I mean, and stuff like that. I just feel like, you know, I don't know how cool I am about that. Well, what do you think? It's like, are these people still trying to hang on to the money they've been making forever, or like times change? You got to kind of change with what's going on. Yeah, I mean, to a certain degree. I mean, I think TV has done a much better job of kind of adapting to, uh, you know, like changing environments of distribution. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it's like the you know like when the record companies were fighting Napster, it's like they wanted to like go back to the 1970s and you know uh, have Led Zeppelin driving a back in a truck full of cash up to <laughs> their door. Yeah, you know it just doesn't exist anymore. Um, so yeah, I mean it's tough. I mean it's like, I mean obviously you know I think people should get paid for the work they do for the art they create. You know it's difficult to say with like copyright laws and what exactly you know does if somebody downloads like six movies do they need to go to prison for the you know 16 years probably not do they need a half a million dollar fine for that no mm -hmm. um but you need your ip banned ip yeah. address is banned yeah yeah and you know it's like everything it's like probably if you create a better way for people to you know like pay for this stuff at a reasonable cost, like, I think most people will, you know, be, you know, just even like if you could have a free movie that was terrible quality or you could pay $3 for like a good quality yeah, movie, like, like uh, what would you do? Three, three twenty P versus 1080. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I think probably, you know, I don't know exactly how to solve that, but I think you have to look for solutions that are consumer friendly. You know, I think that's probably the problem that some of these companies have is they're you know trying to serve themselves instead of serving the consumer yeah <clears throat> well one brand that does serve the consumer pretty well um is vice i don't know if you guys have ever checked out vice at all mm -hmm. but that's like one of my favorite and like how you're speaking like the internet and television yeah. like they went straight from just like youtube and website yeah. blog and now like they have a television channel yeah. on network cable and just the other day i saw like the illest documentary I think I've seen it in a long time. I watched it almost every single day since. And it's on these two brothers from New Zealand who wanted to train with all the Kenyan runners that run marathons. And they literally, at 17 years old, just took off one-way flight out to this uh, village called Iten in Kenya. It's like high altitude, just like 
all anyone does is run there, and they just they just they just went for it, you know. Yeah. And they've been there like ten years. Like I think one is like the first mm-hmm. non-African to go sub one hour in like a half mu- half marathon or something. But wow. it's yeah. it's crazy, um, just to think. But I mean, <clears throat> the thing that intrigues me the most is like just the the running aspect, where like there's so many different like mentalities when it comes to the training or like how many people you want to train with how you can conserve energy how you can do yeah. things like that and i mean i know you've run for yeah a yeah. bit like what's your take on you know the whole well one like just running in general because i'm pretty yeah. sure we're the only animal on the planet that just like runs to sure. help its own endurance and not yeah. like survive something um but aside from that like you know your take on say running with headphones versus not you know yeah. being in tune with your breath and what, whatever your mentality is like you know, I think it's like anything. There's lots of schools of thoughts. Um, and you probably just have to do what, you know, makes you happy, keeps you running, I guess. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's lots of different opinions out there. You know, even just like five years ago, there was this whole, like, barefoot running movement. And I think some people are still involved in that. But there was an author who wrote this book about a, uh, a tribe of, like, Central Americans who live in the Copper Canyons in Mexico. And they run – and they – like basically they're like reconstruct like old tires into like just a footbed they don't wear like running shoes and they just run everywhere and they don't have like supposedly any uh, like injuries or issues with like foot problems that a lot of runners or like knee problems that you know like a lot of runners have these issues yeah. after running for significant periods of time um, so he was advocating this like barefoot running and like you know running these specific ways and you know it's it's like anything it's like you know soccer i'm sure there's like different ways they tell you to train um you know like are you training like with running you could train with like uh, i i guess i know more about training with like cycling where it's like do you there's like i don't know like you can train with your heart rate or you can train with like a um it's like basically something you connect to your bike that measures the amount of power you're putting in and you're trying to keep it at the same power. So, I mean, there's lots of different ways, and they all come in, in and out of, uh, you know, fashion. But I think, you know, anything that's getting you out there Yeah. Well, what kept you best. running? What was, like, Maybe. Your, yeah, I mean, did you did you go headphones, or were you just, like, nature? Uh, I've, d- I've done both at different times. Uh, you know, like, I'm not the best runner in the world, and definitely... You don't have to be. I if mean, I'm on like... a treadmill, well, yeah, I'm going to use some music. <laughs> I can't just, like, stare at a glass wall for... Right. Well, what's the an furthest hour. you've ever run? Uh, furthest I've ever run is probably like uh, ten miles. Not too super, super far. I you mean, know. some people don't even go one mile in a week. Yeah, you know? but it's all different, and you know, like everybody's body is different too. Like I have friends who are like big runners, and like some of them use like a super training program to like work up to a marathon. And then like Sean, he used to be a big runner. I don't think he did any program, and then he just ran the marathon. He did like. Uh, three three and a half hours which is not like a a, marathon yeah he's on a couple but he it's not a great time but it's like a pretty good time yeah i mean i think that's got a lot to say that like uh, for the majority of stuff it's just like almost mind over matter like you know yeah well there's a certain genetic if you know that your body is capable of doing that like all you really have to do is just convince yourself that you're going to do it and then it happens yeah so i mean it's with most things it's just you, you know you keep doing it you get better at it. Keep doing it, you get better, man. Yeah. I mean, you said it yourself. You got to practice every day to get good at something. That's so. true. So just Absolutely. do it, yeah. man. Just do it. Like, get out there. Put yourself out there. Get, get do yourself out there. out there every day that scares you. <laughs> yeah. You better. Oh man, I tell you what, man. On that, we can end it right there, man. That was actually awesome. <laughs> I appreciate your time, dude. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for having us. Scooter Gang. Hey, solid one, brother. Julian. All right. For those of you out there, tune in to Tribe of Good Vibes. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, all social media outlets. Um, and ultimately, just take a bit of knowledge from everything we ever do and try to get inspired, man, because that's the circle we're trying to create. One inspire another, inspire another, and we keep doing crazy stuff and becoming more human than you could ever imagine. All right. Catch y'all later. Holler. No, I mean, we do, but they just don't care about... They're not shot us. I mean, look at their yards unkempt. (laughs)
they, their front yards, you know, <clears> they don't, the trash is yeah. never caught. Dude, that's going to be a sick shot. That was like a wasp in the screen. Perfect. 